Happy Thursday, FlossTube. Hello, crafty friends. How's everybody doing today? My name's Caroline. Welcome back. Daily Crafty Chat. And it is the last day of the year. The last day of 2020. We did it. December the 31st, New Year's Eve. It's always a bit, it's, it's one of my favorite days of the year. So much promise. End of the year, fresh start, new page tomorrow. So good morning. Yes, good morning. I'm recording much earlier today than I normally do. It's only quarter after 9 a.m. here in London, Ontario, Canada. And also, I should say, uh, by the time this video goes up, a very happy New Year's to those crafty friends watching where the clock has already ticked over past New Year's Eve and you are celebrating your fresh new start already. So... 2020. Here we are. Mm. Okay, so let's get to it. Let's get to the numbers first. For the month of December, I did some fundraising for Muscular Dystrophy Canada in conjunction with the idea and premise of Flossmas, which is a month-long non-denominational celebration of holiday stitching, whatever holiday um, you may celebrate. So, in conjunction with uh, some auctions that I ran over on my Instagram page at Off the Grid Needle Arts, and the sales from the Flossmas holiday chart, holiday 2020 chart designed by Patty Brake from Four Boys and a Newfoundland Girl, 50% of all of the proceeds of that chart are being donated. Plus, Patty bumped up her donation amount to $550. Isn't that incredible? That's amazing. And we also had, we also had some private personal donations as well, directly to Muscular Dystrophy Canada. And I have added them all into the total. So those three things combined, we have a grand total of, oh, I didn't actually write the grand total down on my paper. It's on my calculator as I, can't do math in my head. <laughs> Hang on. Okay, we are at $2,965. I'm going to add a final $50 donation directly this morning. Later this morning, after I get this video done, I'm going to donate $50 myself through my business Evertote. We are over $3,000 with that. So yay, look what we did. Over $3,000 for Muscular Dystrophy Canada. And just an enormous thank you to everyone who made this month such a success in such a difficult, difficult year. And uh, yeah, and what, a, what a fantastic way to end this year. And I, I thank you. Okay, so just, uh, just one more thing, uh, wrapping up a conversation from yesterday with my, <laughs> with my German pronunciation of the word, um, Okay, I, I didn't get it right. I still didn't get it right yesterday. And thank you so much to those who are still trying to help me because you're so kind. You're so kind. Everybody who tries to help, they're so kind and they really try hard, but I just didn't get it. So Josh, my friend Josh Mole, the designer, uh, knitwear designer that I'm, I'm always knitting her stuff. I'm always talking about her. I made her a quilt. Um, Many of you have asked how Josh is doing. Uh, she is, you know, just an update on Josh. The medication has not worked and um, she is taking it day by day. So I'm hopeful, I'm really hopeful that her quilt will make it to her in the next, I don't know, the mail is so terrible at the moment and even though I you, you pay for a certain service, they still can't give you any guarantee as to when it's going to arrive. But do you remember that I said Josh knit me a pair of socks? Guess what arrived yesterday? My socks are in this package. Now I'm not going to show you the front because it has my address and Josh's address on it, but it's I, look, it's still sealed up, Josh. I haven't opened it. I'm not going to open it until you have your quilt, so I'm saving it. And I'll tell you, I wish I could. I love hand knit socks. They're my favorite. So Josh sent me a message last night on WhatsApp, and she pronounced, she, she said it for me. So I'm just going to hit the play button so that you can hear, you can hear my Josh. 
Vier Lande. There we go. Do you want to hear it again? Vier Lande. There we go. Okay. Vier, vier Lande. There. I think I've got I've I've got it closer than I've had it before. So a huge thanks to Josh and everyone who is trying to help me. Okay, so um my cast on that I talked about yesterday, my new start for my knitting project for my new new year new start is going to be the Caroline shawl designed by Josh herself. There is a link in the drop down box below if you're interested in joining along with me. My mom left me a comment yesterday and mom, I haven't, I didn't return your uh, comment message. I thought I would just answer you directly on the screen because I thought it was a great question. Um, I gave my mom a beautiful skein of yarn in her box, uh, Christmas box this year and it she wanted to know can i knit the caroline shawl with that skein of yarn that you gave me so i thought maybe others would be interested in the yardages and so on and so forth if you wanted to join in because mom you don't have quite enough yarn you're going to have to choose a different yarn um unless you because i think you can just keep knitting you can you can make it whatever size you want but i think with one skein you're not it's not going to be quite big enough i think you're going to want at least two skeins of yarn so josh's yardage here she says she uses 720 meters of lace weight yarn um for one of the sample knits and then there was a uh, what she calls a sport weight yarn and she used 1050 meters now Josh is from the Netherlands, and here's where we sometimes get into um, the difference between North American and European uh, terminology, because I think that when Josh says sport weight, it's slightly heavier than our fingering weight. So I would say sport weight is almost a DK, because the shawl that Josh knit for me This shawl, she knit this out of uh, Holst Garn. It's the, which one is the one that's not the, the super soft, which is not super soft. It's the Coast that has that combination in it that makes it um, really wearable against the skin. And I can't remember the blend off the top of my head because my, my Holst is in the other room. However, uh, this feels a little thicker than my fingering weight yarn. So when she says sport weight, but when I think of sport weight, I think of a DK or almost worsted. So I, I don't know, hard to say, but 1,050 meters of sport weight yarn. And, and that, that's what she calls this. This feels a little thicker than the yarn that I'm using for my European road trip shawl, which is the one I'm knitting out of the Holst garn. So, but here's the thing with this pattern, you can, you can use whatever yarn weight you want that you have in your stash. If you have a couple of skeins, if you think you've got enough, because you can, you can just gauge how much you've got. It's one of those shawls that you can just keep going. So you can add one more or one less repeat to it entirely up to your, uh, you know, wishes. So. So this is the Caroline shawl. This is the one that Josh made for me. I wore it yesterday and I talked all about it yesterday. And my new year, new start knitting start is I'm casting one on for myself. So mom, I don't think you have quite enough yarn. So that leads me to my next question that I would like to pose to um, all of the knitters out there watching this. I'd like some more ideas for one skein shawls so that I can sort of help my mom out, maybe think of, of an idea for herself. So the yarn that I gave her is a, it's a variegated yarn. It's multicolors in it, um, but sort of, sort of more in the softer palette. So it's got an ecru and a lighter blue and oh, it's beautiful. I had a hard time parting with that one. Let me tell you. However, my mother is worth it. So, um, I would like some suggestions for one skein shawls, ones that are your favorite, not the hitchhiker and not me. So because my mom has knit both of those. So I'm looking for, Maybe something a little bit more 
um, unusual that not a lot of people have knit or something that you knit that was a one skein project that you really enjoyed. And then, uh, and then I can point my mom in a different direction. And my mom can, of course, read the, the comment field. My mom's name is Joan, by the way. And you will see her in the comment field. Um, she, usually, she usually signs her name Caroline's mom. <laughs> so there you go. Um, so yeah, I am casting that on tonight. So yes, I know, new year, new start, and I should maybe wait to the first. But like I said, no plans. I plan not to plan, and I want to cast it on tonight. So that's what I'm doing. And my other new start, the Fierlanda, uh, that I'm starting tomorrow morning. So very excited about that. And uh, Carrie, uh, Leo and Roxy, um, I, I mention her every day now, so <laughs> I'm thinking you're going to, I can just say Carrie now and you'll know who I'm talking about. Carrie and Shiloh of Exitch MD are joining with me um, in this cell and I've started hearing a few other people are jumping on board as well. So there is a hashtag if you're joining in. Um, you can use this hashtag on Facebook or Instagram or, you know, you can just join in and, and not worry about having to post pictures at all. Just, just do it for yourself. Um, there are no rules here. So the hashtag is hashtag off the grid Virlanda, Virlanda Sal. So I will try to remember to put that both on the screen if, if I remember. My editing jobs have been pretty quick the last couple of days and I will try to put it in the drop down box below. So, so join me, join me, join me. Needs a lot of fabric, just warning you. So check your stash for those bigger pieces of fabric. Uh, I, mine's on a 40 count and I, what was the cut size? 20 by 22. And that gave a two and a half inch, three inch border, I think. Double check. There are calculators you can use. So I'm going to recommend the one that I use all the time is the, oh, where did it go? You know, when you're trying to find an app and they always disappear on your phone. It's called the X Stitch Calc. And that's an app. You can just download it and, it, and it's really easy. The other one is, uh, you can just Google it online. It's called, I think it's the Yarn Tree Calculator, and you can just plug in your numbers, what you have and what you want to achieve on the fabric that you've got, and it will tell you exactly how much, um, what a cut size you need. Don't forget to add in border allowance because that's really, really important. You don't want to uh, forget that step and then go to a lot of time and trouble and then discover that you don't have enough fabric in there. <laughs> That's not a fun discovery ever. Um, the other thing with the, the, the Fierlanda is that in the silk stitching app, and this I tell you is a little bit of magic in the silk stitching app, there is a fabric count and material calculator. So you plug in the fabric count that you have. So let me show you here. So this is again, this is the silk stitching app for only for iOS at the moment. So I've got my 40 count plugged in here. These are the Fierlanda is a three color sampler. I'm only doing one. I'm only, I'm, I'm stitching everything in one color. It's going to be mon monochromatic for me, but if you want to use three colors, so they've got the three colors. So pick which one and then it tells you how much thread you'll need. And you can select DMC or Soie d'Alger, uh, and it will tell you exactly how many skeins of floss. So let's flip to the DMC. So on a 40 count piece of fabric, you will need 12 skeins of one color, one skein of, and then one and one skein of each of the other two colors that are in it. So if you're doing this as a one color monochromatic project, you would need 14 skeins of floss on a 40 count linen. And that is now here's where I'm, I'm a little, actually this totally reminds me because I was going to ask this question of Dorothy, the, the Dorothy and Uta. Uta was the designer of this chart. Dorothy and her son Justice, um, are also, jo Dorothy is also a designer, but it was Uta that designed this particular pattern. Um, when it's talking about the thread calculations, it says that the Soie d'Alger is accounting for one strand over two, 
but the DMC is accounting for two strands over two. My question was, is that the same for a 40 count? Is it still accounting for two strands over two? And I have a feeling that it is and that that, cal that, that thread calculator is maybe generous because if you're going to be stitching it one thread over two, but that's where I'm unsure because maybe it has taken that into account. 14 skeins of DMC. Um, so, you know, that's going to be, and you could even buy a cone. If you if you wanna do Amazon, if you wanna order your DMC, you can order it from Amazon in a cone. Some people have said it's not the same quality as, um, you know, DMC that you're going to, to buy elsewhere. Uh, I haven't found there was, well, I haven't used a lot of it, but it seemed okay to me, and you can buy it in a cone. The, when I purchased it on Amazon, you can't, it doesn't give you the DMC number in the title. You see the color and it gives a name for it. There's a trick. If you scroll down to the item description, in the item description, like the SKU number or the part number or something like that, if you read along it, da 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 da, there are the numbers at the very end that will correspond with your DMC number. And that's how you can you can find it there. I hope that makes sense. If if that was at all confusing, shoot me a question in the comment box below and I'll try to do a better job explaining that. So I know that these big projects, they take a lot of floss. They require a lot of floss. And so sometimes if if you're trying to do this and, and not break the bank, that can be um, that can be one way to go. So so that is those are my new year new starts. Now I did a little bit of knitting last night, so I'll just share that. I also put two lengths of black 310 into my uh, Savon, but I'm, I'm not gonna bother showing you that. It doesn't look much different. But my sock, I did a couple more stripes. So I'm almost done, I'm almost done the green stripe. So the purple and the green, those are, those are new. Again, like I said before, I always do such a long heel flap that my gusset decreases take forever. They take forever, but that's okay. Because it just, the sock fits me better when there's a higher, um, it, it means that there are more stitches able to go over the saddle of my foot, which means I have a really high um, arch, in, instep, instep, arch, arch. And, uh, it just means the socks fit me better. So there's my sock. I have one more thing to show you today. And this, oh boy. Oh, and my battery light's going. Okay, hang on, be right back. Okay, there we go. Okay, so uh, I received, every year uh, my family the adults in my side of the family choose names um, to for gift exchange we so that we don't we don't buy for everyone um, there are six adults and a, a Sarah has a year or so to go and then she will be also joining in the ranks but then we'll have an odd number so we'll have to figure out who's buying for who uh, so Kathy my sister-in-law had my name this year for Christmas and my sister-in-law is one of the most wonderful crafters you will ever meet. She is, everything that she tries turns out perfectly. <laughs> and you know, she can be a brand new knitter and it will be perfect. She can be a brand new tatter and it will be perfect. A brand new weaver, brand new spinner, you name it. And she's just, she excels at everything that she tries her hand at. So this year, Kathy tried her hand at macrame. The sort of more modern, I think it's, she described it as a, it's called boho macrame. And she had my name for Christmas this year. And I have to show you what she made me for Christmas this year because it is stunning. Are you ready? Look at this. Look, look at that. K 
Can you believe it? I mean, look at those. Look at that texture. Look at that texture. It's phenomenal. This is just, it's so beautiful. And she made this for me. This is, um, it's called Macrame Cord, I think. She ordered it from a place in British Columbia. And then look at the layers. Look at the, there are, it's three layers and then everything is connected. I just, I find this absolutely fascinating. Four layers, look, there's a fourth one. So there's one, two, three, and then the final layer. So it, it achieves this absolutely beautiful sort of dimension effect on the front. It's gorgeous. It's absolutely stunning. And she used a piece of wood from her special summer home. So what a lucky girl am I? I mean, look at this. It's stunning. I have to tell you, I was I was chatting with John. I said, I, I need to find a really special place to hang it. And Sarah said, you can hang it in my room. <laughs> so um, Kathy, Auntie Kathy, if you're watching this, your niece would like one just like this. So perhaps for her birthday, if she's a really good girl, maybe Sarah will get one this year too. Because uh, I, uh, it's just gorgeous. So I'm going to bring this middle knot up closer so that you can have a good look. Look at that. It's just beautiful. So intricate. Gorgeous. You'll have to excuse Luna. She has her head in a certain angle that makes the snoring. She needs a, she needs a CPAP machine. Um, oh, it's just gorgeous. Look at that. Oh, love it. Love it, love it, love it. A huge thank you to my sister-in-law for giving me such a beautiful gift. I love it. And I still haven't chosen a perfect spot for it, but I will. It's coming because I don't like to put nail holes in the wall until I'm absolutely sure that that's where it goes. So I'm taking my time before I decide. So that is it for me. That is it for the final, final day of 2020 Daily Crafty Chat, wrapping up the year. And I'm super excited for a fresh new start tomorrow. I have a lot of new and exciting things coming um, for, for Evertote next year. I will share more of that with you later. Um, I will, I, I can tell you, I will be needing a couple of days of, there will be a few days next week with no video because I need to, uh, I, I, have, I have quite a bit of work to do for Evertote to get the, the bag sets out. So there will be a couple of days where I, I need to, Put my head down and focus on the sewing machine so um but i will uh, i will be back tomorrow and i'll show you the first few stitches that i've put into my new year new start and with that i wish you all a very very happy and relaxing and restful and healthy new year's eve <laughs> and new year's for those who are already there and i will see you tomorrow so take care and happy stitching <laughs>